we have an oil to gas, natural gas um, conversion in our house. And it's been a long road to get here. It's taken about six months since my first phone call to the gas company. So I want to take you through the steps uh, that we have to, that we, that we went through. So step one, we contacted the gas company. Look from their website, they have an oil to gas program uh, where what they do is they evaluate your house and the cost that it's going to take to bring a gas line from the street to your house. And well, first they check, they make sure you have natural gas on your street. They look at that, that overall cost to them and then they have an algorithm essentially where they look at, okay, what's the return on investment from them? Are they going to make money off our gas consumption in one year, two year? Uh, and if it's a small number of years, then you essentially get that gas line laid for free. Uh, if it's a long time before they get their money back, uh, there is going to be a cost. For us, there was a cost. We live a long way from the street. They had to bring that gas line through a small forest uh, to get to our house. So we had to pay a small amount for that. But essentially, they, they quoted that out um, and we, we, we had our quote for that. Step two was to find a contractor. So we had four contractors come to our house uh, to quote us for solutions for a new gas boiler and hot water heater for our, our property. So we evaluated those quotes and we um, and then we picked one, right? We went with a uh, went with the second cheapest, but the most highly regarded um, in in the area uh, on our recommendations. Uh, and step three was to apply for financing. So yes, you could pay upfront for this, but there's actually financing options. And generally, I'm not a, a person who likes debt, uh, but the state-run programs to help you install. And the, one of the programs that Connecticut runs. Uh, gives us the ability to do this on a 1% loan. Uh, particularly in high times, at times like this where we have high inflation, 1% loan is, is, is cheaper in the long run than paying cash. Um, so essentially, we're taking that 1% loan and the repayment terms are quite interesting. So this is, your, your state probably has a, a program as well to help with uh, the, the conversion. So definitely look it up. Out, the program in our state works out the repayment on that loan based on your energy estimated energy savings between oil and gas. So hypothetically, if regardless of how much the, the install cost for my new gas equipment, if my estimated savings are $100 a month, my repayment is going to be $80 a month. So you pay 80% of the estimated savings. And the idea is uh, you don't want to re they don't want you to have a repayment that's higher than your savings because that won't incentivize people to switch from oil to gas. Uh, but you do still need to make the repayment. So that's why they, they cap it at 80% of the estimated savings. Uh, so we know in theory, if the, the math works right and the algorithm all works, we're gonna be running uh, our heating this winter at a lower cost than before, uh, albeit not as low as it's gonna be if we can have completely paid off all of the, uh, the, the equipment and the install that we have. So there we have, we have our, um, our quote from our oil, uh, sorry, our gas company, we have our contractors, and then we have um, our financing for the project. So the next step is scheduling. And really, so when it came to scheduling, the biggest dependency is when that, uh, the natural gas company can lay that line to your house. Um, so in, it's not feasible to drill a dig in the winter. So we have to wait for the thaw and then get on the schedule. The other dependency is financing. So you need to get your financing approved if you're gonna do that. Um, if you ever use a state program, it takes a little bit longer, but I think it's a, it's a better way to go with a lower interest rate and more favorable repayment terms. Or you could probably get financing from your contractor as well or any other kind of financing you like. But once you've got those two together, you can pay, we had to pay our uh, the, the cost of the, the gas line install from the street. So for us, that was about $3,000. Uh, so we paid for that and that got that, the ability for them to schedule that. And then we had to wait about two months for that to happen. Uh, but that, that really kicked everything else off. Once that was booked and scheduled, uh, then the everything else could flow. So our contractors know that they we have financing approved for them. Uh, they are able to get us on their schedule. Uh, but again, dependency on that line being being met. Uh, that, sorry, that line being installed. From that point, it's really out of my hands, right? It, everything else comes from uh, the organizations that I'm working with. So the, uh, the, the contract is scheduled with the city uh, for uh, the inspection of the, the, the gas uh, line coming into the house. Um, and then the contractor and the, the gas company 
uh, collectively scheduled for when this gas is ultimately going to be turned on and I'll have a meter on my house. Uh, so there was a lot of patience. It gets a little frustrating waiting at times. You don't know what's happening. Uh, but a, a lot of patience. Uh, and and then, uh, but we're almost there now. So where we're at today is about halfway through the gas installation. So if you can check some of our videos, I'll take you for a step-by-step -step of, of how that gas, natural gas installation happened um, and how that conversion from oil uh, is working for us.